Hey guys, Tim on here. But today, we're not going fishing. We got the car, we got the fishing stuff, we even got the Sportsman 106. But today is project day. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to mount a Yak Attack Mighty Rail without screws using pop rivets the superior way. Let's get started. In order to do this job correctly, you're going to need your mount or mounts of choice, a pair of scissors or clippers, a fine tip Sharpie, a microfiber cloth, and some isopropyl alcohol, some double-sided tape. I prefer electronics repair tape, but any thin double-sided tape will do the job. Make sure you just don't get that thick stuff at Walmart. That's supposed to be a permanent fixture. We just want something that's gonna temporarily hold our mount. You're going to need some marine grade waterproof pop rivets, a rivet gun, some marine grade silicone sealant, and these flange bolts are for a later project, but won't hurt to have them. And then a drill with a 3 16 drill bit. Make sure you're using a good U or new drill bit with a nice sharp tip on it. Later on in the video, I'll recommend that you use a cordless drill. I stick to that. The less, wield or the less wieldy and heavy it is, the more precise your holes are gonna be. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Now, I tend to over prepare for a project, so you'll see a large assortment here. I'm not gonna use all these. I actually picked these up from Camping World. You can order them online just about anywhere. A lot of sporting, uh, Sport, sporting goods outlets will have them. Uh, but I got all of these so I could figure out which ones I wanted to use. At first, I thought I was gonna wanna use these aluminum ones, but when it comes to making my own custom mounts and stuff, uh, toilet flanges actually are excellent for grabbing into your rails. They don't really sit very well in these, but they sit very, very well in these two. And I figured if I'm gonna pump these on here, I might as well use the long ones. There were a lot of videos about this. But what I noticed is that everyone uses the screws that are included with their mount. And I'm not sure that's exactly what I want to do. I have here a set of Gat Gear waterproof rivets. And if I can make these work, I'm going to make these work. And the reason I think I want to do that is I don't really trust threads in the, in the plastic. Yeah, it's probably fine. But as the kayak ages, that plastic is going to flex and give and wiggle. It's probably not going to hold up forever. And I'm looking for something that is this OEM quality. Now these supposedly have 200 pounds, where is that, where is that? 200 pounds of tensile strength. So hopefully this will be a permanent solution. And the good news is, is that I have to drill out the same hole regardless. It's gonna be a 3 16 hole. So I can try these, if I don't like them, I'll drill them out and I'll just replace them with the screws or maybe I'll do uh, countersunk uh, nuts or something. We'll figure it out, but let's get to it. Regardless of how I choose to adhere these, I want a clean mounting service. And I'm gonna show you why here in a little bit. It's been a little while since I've cleaned the kayak. Matter of fact, last time I had it out, uh, it got absolutely disgusting. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, soap and water would work. I wanted to take my kayak to the car wash before I actually started this project. You know how it goes, time restrictions and all that. But I'm gonna take some isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to take a microfiber cloth and I'm going to clean the surface that I'm gonna mount this to. Once I've got my surface mount, or surface that I'm mounting it to clean, I'm going to take some double-sided electrical repair tape. Now this is the sort of stuff you use in screen and phone repairs and things like that. I happen to have it handy. You don't have to do this. I'm just OCD. We're gonna take our mount. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put just a small strip on each side of the mount and we're gonna put it where we want it. And we're going to peel the backing off of here and we're gonna place this down where we want it. Now this isn't gonna hold it very well, but what it will do is it will keep me in place long enough for me to put some markings in these holes where I wanna drill my holes. I assume that since I'm using rivets, it's actually pretty important that I get these holes just right. So an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's easier to correct your mistakes when there's less of them, you know what I'm saying? Once we have our mount about where we want it, we're gonna take a fine tip Sharpie and we're gonna mark the centers of each of these holes. The smaller, more centered hole you can, or dot you can make, the better, instead of filling in the whole thing. Because I imagine that especially with pop rivets, you want to make this as even as possible because this mount will flex. You flex it in too much, your accessories are gonna have a hard time coming on and off. You flex it out too much, 
it's not going to hold as tight as it could. So let's go ahead and mark all of these holes and then we're going to take this mount off of here and we're going to drill our pilot holes. Once you have all your pilot holes marked, you should have 10 very evenly spaced, similarly sized dots. Now if you have one at your disposal, this is where I'd recommend using a punch to kind of put a dimple where all of these dots are so that your drill bit doesn't want to walk. Unfortunately, I can't seem to find mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a drill bit and I'm going to finger roll it just like this and kind of get it started before I start drilling, especially because I have a giant corded drill I use for cracking safes. Uh, I would recommend a cordless, but again, I can't find it. I imagine those two are both in the same place. Once you start marking up and putting holes in your kayak, you've kind of reached the point of no return. Now this should be pretty easy to start. I recommend using a quality fresh drill bit so that you don't have to worry about this sort of thing. Once you've used a drill bit in your fingers to get the hole started, you should be left with 10 evenly spaced dimples that are starting to look really fresh. This is the point where we get the drill bit out and we start to drill. Once you start putting your drill bit in and put holes in your kayak, you're past the point of no return. So remember, measure twice, cut once. Again, I recommend using a small cordless drill, lightweight, easy maneuver, easy to keep steady. This is extremely overkill for this, but it's the drill I have on hand, so I'm gonna be extremely careful. Now we have 10 beautiful holes in our kayak. Let's make sure we measured them right. If you left the double-sided tape on your little mount here, you can keep it on there, put it where it needs to be. Those holes are gorgeous. This is what happens when you use over precaution instead of throwing caution to the wind. Now, I need to test to make sure that these rivets are gonna sit flat enough, in there enough, that they're gonna work. Otherwise, we're just gonna use the screws and some sealant. Let's check real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna look really, really good. If you look closely, you can see that the black head of this rivet sticks out flush with the top of our mounting rail. That is exactly what I want. Next, we're gonna use our sealant to make sure it's extra watertight. I just picked up some regular Starbright Marine Epoxy from Walmart while I was there. Um, I suppose you could use any silicone-based sealant that is waterproof and sets relatively quickly. Uh, I've always had good luck with Starbright, like fi fixing bilge pump holes and things like that on my friend's boats. You use whatever you need to use. I don't think that this is a critical component of this step. Just better to have it than not have it. You could also go and buy a whole tube of caulk, like silicone caulk to use. I opted for this because I'm only doing two rails today. This should be enough. And because I want the precision to be able to stick this down in this hole without having to push my mount or worry about like two handing it. Let's see how it works out. What I've done here is I've left one of my rivets unpopped in here to kind of hold it into place. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do a star, use a star pattern to push this silicone down in here. And then I'm gonna pop my rivets once they're all in here. Also, you'll notice that some of these I ended up putting a little bit too much in there. I went ahead and scraped that away with a zip tie. It's okay if you have a little bit too much because we can always wipe it away when we're done, but we don't want it gooping out of there. It's just not gonna look as clean as it could. Now we're just gonna go through we're gonna take our rivets, we're gonna pop them through, and that silicone should squeeze down in there, seal under the head and seal beneath the mount. Should give us a nice watertight seal. When you see a little bit of silicone popping out the top, that's okay. Remember, we're gonna wipe that away later.
Now with all of our rivets in place, we're at the final step. We're just gonna pop these. Your rivet gun is gonna come with a double, couple of different sized heads for the rivet. All you have to do is find the one that's the right size. Pretty sure this one is this, there you go. Mine just happened to be 3 16 You're going to push, push this rivet gun down firmly as far as you can, and then you're just gonna squeeze. It's gonna get hard to do, and it's gonna pop. And there we go. And now we're gonna repeat with all of them. When all of our rivets are popped, just go ahead, come back through with that microfiber cloth. and wipe off all the excess silicone sealant, and boom! There we go, that is a rock solid mount. That is awesome. What I have here is a uh, rod holder that I'm going to turn into a GoPro mount in my next video. But what I've done is I've mounted it on my rail, and I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth, and I see the body of the uh, kayak flexing which is just fine but I do not see any separation between the rail and the body of the kayak which is exactly what we want I'm going to call this done it looks really good and that's it we've tested that it's secure and mounted at all 10 points by trying to flex it and seeing if it pulls away from the body of the kayak now you can repeat this process on the other side of your kayak if you want to I recommend that if you do that Try to take some measurements from points on your kayak, such as a rod holder or a bungee tie down, to get it as close to the exact same spot on the other side for that nice, clean OEM look. If you have tips, tricks, suggestions, ideas, or even if you thought I did something wrong, let us all know down in the comments. That way, anybody else who sees this video can get that wealth of knowledge as well. I am not the foremost authority on these sorts of things. This is a journey that you and I are gonna take together. Speaking of, if you wanna see me turn this into a GoPro mount, I suggest you get subscribed because that's going to be great. As well, if you like BFS, bass fishing, pan fishing, cat fishing, spillway fishing, just general wholesome fishing content, you might be part of the Tim Hunt Fishing family. If you know somebody who's trying to do this project as well and could use this information, feel free to share it. But that's all I got for you. I need you to remember, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. God bless you. Keep on fishing. And we'll see you in the next one.